Donald Trump be good for Christianity in America? This is a sensitive topic, and I will try to address with humility and a sense of respect for all possible viewpoints. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as we approach the 2024 U.S. presidential election, we find ourselves at a crossroads, both as a nation and as a community of believers. The question before us is one that weighs heavily on the hearts of many Christians. Is Donald Trump good for Christianity in America? And perhaps more crucially, is it dangerous to view Donald Trump almost like a messiah, a savior of Christianity? In the last few years, we have witnessed a phenomenon unlike anything we have seen in modern American politics. Donald Trump has garnered a passionate following among many Christians who see him as a defender of religious freedom, a protector of traditional values, and a bulwark against the forces of secularism. But as we dive deeper into this question, we must ask ourselves, are we placing our hope in the right place? Are we elevating a political leader to a position that should be reserved for Christ alone? Let us first consider some of the reasons why many Christians have rallied behind Donald Trump. Throughout his presidency, Trump made several decisions and took actions that resonated strongly with Christian voters. One of the most significant was his appointment of conservative judges to the federal judiciary, including three justices to the Supreme Court. These appointments were seen as victories for those who seek to uphold traditional Christian values in the face of growing secularism and legal challenges to religious freedom. In a 2020 interview with CBN News, Trump stated, We're going to protect Christianity, and I can say that. I don't have to be politically correct. We're going to protect it. Such statements have endeared him to many Christians who feel that their faith is under attack in a society that increasingly marginalizes religious beliefs. Additionally, Trump was the first sitting U.S. president to attend the annual March for Life in Washington, D.C., an event that draws thousands of pro-life advocates from across the country. In his speech at the 20th March for Life, Trump declared, unborn children have never had a stronger defender in the White House. For many Christians, this was a powerful affirmation of their values and a sign that Trump was a leader who would stand up for the sanctity of life. Trump also took strong stances on issues like religious liberty and school prayer. In 2020, his administration issued new guidance affirming students' right to pray in public schools, stating, we will not let anyone push God from the public square. For believers who have long felt that their religious freedoms are being eroded, these actions were seen as a crucial defense of their rights. However, as we consider these positive actions, we must also critically examine the larger picture. While Trump has taken steps that align with certain Christian values, we must be careful not to conflate political victories with spiritual salvation. The Bible warns us repeatedly about placing our trust in human leaders rather than in God. In Psalm 146 verses 3 to 4, the psalmist writes, Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. This passage is a sobering reminder that no matter how powerful or influential a leader may be, they are still human, fallible, and finite. As Christians, our ultimate hope should not be in any political figure, but in Jesus Christ, our true Savior and King. Yet we have seen instances where Trump has been elevated to almost messianic status by some of his supporters. In 2019, a member of Trump's inner circle, Paula White, declared, to say no to President Trump would be saying no to God, a statement that raised alarm among many believers. This type of rhetoric is dangerous because it blurs the line between political leadership and spiritual authority. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
This verse is a powerful reminder that salvation comes through Christ alone. No human leader, no matter how influential, can take the place of Jesus in our lives. When we begin to view a political figure as a savior of Christianity, we risk falling into idolatry. Furthermore, we must consider Trump's own statements about his faith. In a 2015 interview with Bloomberg, Trump was asked if he had ever asked God for forgiveness. His response was, I am not sure I have. I just go on and try to do a better job from there. I don't think so. While it is not our place to judge another's relationship with God, this statement suggests a lack of understanding of the central Christian concept of repentance and forgiveness through Christ. As we reflect on this, it is important to remember the words of 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. Trump, like all of us, is in need of God's grace and forgiveness. He is not a Messiah, he is a man, a man who, like all leaders, will one day stand before God to give an account of his actions. We must also consider the impact of Trump's leadership on the witness of the church. The Bible calls us to be salt and light in the world, to reflect Christ's love and truth in all that we do. In Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. While Trump's policies may align with certain Christian values, his rhetoric and behavior have often been divisive and combative. In a 2017 interview with the New York Times, Trump was asked if he regretted any of his tweets. His response was, It's not the tweets, it's the retweets that get you in trouble. This attitude of doubling down on controversial or inflammatory statements can undermine the witness of Christians who support him, leading others to view the church as more concerned with political power than with living out the teachings of Christ. In Philippians 2 verses 3 to 4, Paul exhorts us, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. As followers of Christ, we are called to a higher standard, one of humility, love, and selflessness. We must ask ourselves, does our support for any political leader reflect these values? Are we demonstrating the love of Christ in our words and actions, even when we engage in political discourse? Another critical point to consider is the potential for idolatry when we place too much hope in any political figure. In Exodus 20 verse 3, God commands, You shall have no other gods before me. This commandment is not just about worshiping idols made of stone or wood. It is about anything that takes the place of God in our hearts. When we look to a political leader as the ultimate defender of our faith, we risk placing them on a pedestal that belongs to God alone. It is essential to recognize that Trump, like any leader, is a tool that God can use for his purposes, but he is not the source of our hope or salvation. In Isaiah 45 verse 1, we see how God used the pagan king Cyrus as his instrument. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him. God can use anyone, believer or not, to accomplish his will. But this does not mean that the leader themselves is righteous or should be viewed as a divine figure. As we approach the 2024 election, we must carefully discern where we place our trust. The Bible warns us in Jeremiah 17 verse 5, This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from your flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Our ultimate allegiance must be to God, not to any political figure. In conclusion, the question of whether Donald Trump is good for Christianity in America is complex. On one hand, 
His policies have supported religious freedom, defended the unborn, and protected traditional values. The way he is sometimes viewed as a near-messianic figure and his divisive rhetoric raise serious concerns about the impact on the church's witness and the potential for idolatry. As Christians, we must navigate these turbulent times with wisdom, humility, and a steadfast commitment to the teachings of Christ. We are called to pray for our leaders, to engage in the political process, but never to lose sight of where our true hope lies. In the words of Psalm 20, verse 7, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. Does this mean that Donald Trump's opponent, Kamala Harris, will better for Christianity in America? It is certainly not for me to say, as that is not the point of this video. If you want to know more about what I think of Kamala Harris, Watch my video with the title, Is Kamala Harris Dangerous for Christianity in America? Let us remember that no matter who sits in the Oval Office, Jesus Christ sits on the throne of heaven and his kingdom is eternal. Our mission is to be faithful to him, to be a light in the darkness, and to point others to the only Savior who can truly redeem and restore. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel, like, and share this video. Let me know what you think about Donald Trump, Kamala Harris, and the election as it relates to Christianity in America. Please let us keep the comments Christian, respectful even for those we do not agree with. May God grant us the wisdom to discern His will, the courage to stand for truth, and the grace to love our neighbors as ourselves, even in the midst of political uncertainty. Amen.